literature with Purva. In this video, we are going to discuss the famous essay of T.S. Eliot, Tradition and the Individual Talent, which forms an integral part of the 20th century literary criticism. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you'll never miss an update. The essay, Tradition and the Individual Talent, was first published in a literary journal called Egoist in 1919. It was later published in Eliot's first book of criticism called The Sacred Wood. T.S. Eliot has himself confessed that he is a classicist in literature, a royalist in politics, and an Anglo-Catholic in religion. In Tradition and the Individual Talent, Eliot discusses his views on poetry and the importance of tradition. The essay is divided into three parts. In the first part, Eliot has discussed the concept of tradition. In the second part, Eliot has discussed the theory of impersonal poetry and finally conclusion. Let's first take a look at the concept of tradition. Eliot feels that nowadays people tend to look at the word tradition in a very disapproving way. People tend to praise a poet for those elements in his poems that are filled with newness and that differentiates him from others. According to Eliot, tradition means a historical sense which compels the poet to write not merely with his own generation in his bones but to write with the feeling that the whole of past literature of Europe starting from Homer is within him. This historical sense is what makes the writer traditional and it is more important than the individual poet. Now what does historical sense mean? It means that the poet should have a sense of the history of poetry. For example, a 21st century poet, like today's poet, must know about all the great poets and about all the great poems that have been written before him. According to T.S. Eliot, the most valuable parts of a poet's work are those in which the dead poets or his ancestors assert their immortality vigorously. For example, if a 21st century poet writes a poem that has the reflection of Shakespeare or Wordsworth or T.S. Eliot, it will be considered a valuable piece of work. People will say that, wow, this poem has the reflection of Shakespeare. It feels as if Wordsworth has written it. But that does not mean that the poet is copying Wordsworth or Shakespeare. It simply means that the poem has reflection of Shakespeare's work or Wordsworth's work. It just reminds people of all those great poets of the past. T.S. Eliot believes that there should be a dynamic relationship between the past and present writers. The poet will be judged by standards of the past. For example, if there is a poet today, if there is a great poet today, then that poet will always be judged by the standard of poetry written by T.S. Eliot, Wordsworth, Shakespeare and all other great poets. Therefore, T.S. Eliot feels that the poet must merge his personality with the tradition. Now let's take a look at the second part of the essay, the theory of impersonal poetry. According to Eliot, in order to create a great poem, one should sacrifice oneself. Eliot said that the progress of the artist is a continual self-sacrifice, a continual extinction of personality. This is called depersonalization, a continual process of self-surrender, surrender of the poet's personality to the art and tradition of poetry. Eliot demonstrates this through a chemical reaction. According to Eliot, the mind of the poet is like a catalyst. When a piece of platinum, which is the catalyst, is introduced in a gas chamber containing oxygen and sulfur dioxide, they combine to form sulfuric acid, but the platinum remains unchanged. 
The mind of the poet is like the catalyst platinum. The feelings and emotions are oxygen and sulfur dioxide and the result sulfuric acid is the poem. The mind of the poet creates various compounds but he stays separate from the creation. According to T.S. Eliot, the mind of the poet is a receptacle that can seize and store countless images, pictures, thoughts, feelings and emotions. It is not the greatness of emotion that matters but the intensity of the artistic process, the pressure under which the artistic fusion takes place that matters. T.S. Eliot completely dismisses the romantic theory of self-expression. The experiences of a poet that are important to him as a man do not find much of a place in his poetry. And all those elements in his poetry that are important to him has nothing to do with the personality of the poet. Therefore, T.S. Eliot completely dismisses William Wordsworth's theory. According to T.S. Eliot, Poetry is not turning loose of emotion, but it is an escape from emotion. It is not the expression of personality, but rather the escape from personality. Eliot says that the emotion of art is impersonal. It has nothing to do with the personal life of a poet. For example, there are some people who write poems when they are very sad. They express all their personal sadness, all their personal emotions in the poem. So they are following William Wordsworth's theory which says that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. Whereas you can find some great poets who write about various themes such as the pain of child labor, surviving a natural disaster, which has nothing to do with their personal life. So these poets are following T.S. Eliot's theory, which says that poetry is not the expression of personality, but rather an escape from personality. The artist can achieve this impersonality only by cultivating the historical sense, by being conscious of the poetic tradition. According to T.S. Eliot, every poem should be objective. Every poet should be objective and impersonal. So that's it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to discuss the terms dissociation of sensibility and objective correlative that were given by T.S. Eliot in his other essays. So stay tuned. If you found the video helpful, then do like it and share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching the video and stay tuned to learning literature with Purva.